SpaceX has just received the launch license from the FAA for Starship's seventh flight. Wait, what? It's December, they're flying in a month and they flew a month ago. How did they do this so quickly? Well, there's more to this than what's on the surface. Let's get into it. Given the potential changes to the trajectory and the significant upgrades with the Block 2 version of the ship, it was anticipated that the FAA would take a closer look at Starship's seventh flight test. For those of you who might be a little bit out of the loop, the next Starship flight features Ship 33 and Booster 14. While Booster 14 is still classified as a Block 1 booster, Ship 33 is considered a Block 2 vehicle, featuring redesigned flaps, larger fuel tanks and numerous other upgrades and modifications. But judging by this license and when it was released, the FAA does not appear to believe that the modifications made to the Starship vehicle warrant a significant revision of its license. This could have been the case if the changes had impacted safety or other critical operational parameters. So let's begin by examining the FAA statement to understand what has been conveyed. In an email, the FAA had this to say regarding the license. Today, the FAA issued a license modification authorizing SpaceX to launch multiple missions of the Starship Super Heavy vehicle on the Flight 7 mission profile and vehicle configuration. The FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental and other licensing requirements for the suborbital test flight. This quote essentially says that the FAA evaluated the possibility of launching multiple missions using the configuration SpaceX is currently proposing, a Block 2 Starship Starship paired with a Block 1 booster and concluded that the relevant information and safety requirements have been satisfied. Based on what we know, this configuration might indeed be used for several more flights given that boosters 15, 16 and 17 do not appear to be Block 2 models either. Additionally, we've received confirmation of what we already anticipated. The next Starship flight will closely resemble flights 3 through 6 following another suborbital trajectory. This likely means we'll see a if everything goes as planned catch attempt using the tower along with some form of simulated ship landing, as Elon mentioned, somewhere in the Indian Ocean west of Australia. This is also confirmed in the latter part of the statement. Quote, the Flight 7 mission profile involves launch of the combined Starship Super Heavy vehicle from Boca Chica, Texas, a return to the launch site of the Super Heavy booster rocket for a catch attempt by the launch tower and a water landing of the Starship vehicle in the Indian Ocean west of Australia please contact SpaceX for information about its planned launch date. So we're looking at a launch from Texas, I think that was a bit obvious. Then there's the possibility of a catch attempt by the launch tower and a water landing in the Indian Ocean. In terms of trajectory, it's quite similar to Flight 6. Of course, the vehicles themselves are vastly different from what flew last time, but from a regulatory and trajectory standpoint, there's not much new to report. And finally, the FAA mentions, quote, the SpaceX Starship program operates under an FAA-issued Part 450 launch license. Well, we already knew that, as it's always been the case, but this definition is important as Part 450 also confirms the criteria for a mishap. More specifically, that is Title 14, Chapter 3, Subchapter C, Part 450 of the Code of Federal Regulations, which explains what type of license this is. Title 14 is for Aeronautics and Space, Chapter 3 for Commercial Space Transportation, Subchapter C for Licensing, and then Part 450 explains the requirements. Under the previous rules, Part 415, which for example, Falcon 9 still operates under, the criteria to declare a launch mishap are very broadly defined a human spaceflight incident, a launch or re-entry accident, a launch or re-entry incident, and a mishap. Yes, it says that a mishap defines a mishap. While under Part 450's requirements, which Starship operates on, these definitions are a bit more defined. A serious injury or fatality, a malfunction of a safety critical system, a failure of a safety organization, safety operations or safety procedures, a high risk of causing a serious or fatal injury to any spaceflight participant, crew, government astronaut or member of the public, substantial damage to property not associated with the activity, an unplanned substantial damage to property associated with the activity, an unplanned permanent loss of the vehicle, an impact of hazardous debris outside of defined areas, and a failure to complete a launch or re-entry as planned. I can already hear some of you getting frustrated. 
Failure to complete a launch or re-entry as planned means that any failed landing will trigger a mishap investigation and will be waiting for weeks yet again, right? Well, no. Under Part 450.175 of the regulations, the FAA outlines what qualifies as test-induced damage, which essentially refers to damage that occurs simply because you are testing something in the first place. This is an optional add-on that can be included in launch licenses, and it is included in this one just as it was for the previous flights. This all means that, under the defined criteria, the flight will not be classified as a mishap if it does not result in any serious injury or fatality, damage to property not associated with the license activity, or hazardous debris leaving the predefined hazard area. These exceptions are the following failure of the thermal shield during high heating. The FAA as well as SpaceX understands that the thermal protection system is still being developed and is a work in progress item. With this consideration in place, it ensures that any experimental work on the TPS will not directly result in a mishap investigation should problems arise. Failure of the flap system during high dynamic pressure, very much related to the first point, but just a bit later on, a flap failing during the belly flop maneuver would not constitute a mishap either. Failure of the Raptor engine system during the landing Starship burn, still very much related to the landing, this one pertains to the ignition and burn of the center Raptors for the flip maneuver before the soft landing in the ocean. We have witnessed issues with this phase of flight before, particularly during the earlier test flights, so it makes sense to define this as experimental. Failure of the Raptor engine system during in-space demonstration burn. Of course, igniting an engine in space is no small feat, and the FAA wants to allow SpaceX to continue working on their in-space relight and deorbit capabilities without facing penalties for it. And finally, failure of super heavy systems during post-booster catch vehicle saving. This preempts any explosions, ruds or other issues that might arise during the safing of the booster following a catch. Another very reasonable addition, as this is still a highly dynamic phase of recovery, and as we've seen in the past, such as with Starship SN10, that vehicles can be tricky to secure safely. Again, all these scenarios will only trigger a mishap investigation if they cause serious safety issues or injuries, which is rather unlikely, given that the areas where these maneuvers take place are either close to people during launch or are in literally space, where it's quite difficult for humans to be in close proximity. The final note this license provides is the option for SpaceX to conduct either a controlled or uncontrolled re-entry of Starship. Before launch, SpaceX is presented with the option to either inform the FAA that they will perform a controlled steered re-entry of Starship or opt for an uncontrolled re-entry, which would result in the loss of the vehicle. In either case, if SpaceX chooses this option, the loss of the Starship during re-entry will be considered planned by the FAA and will not trigger a mishap investigation. That was a lot to process in a single email, and we still haven't even looked at the license itself. But the good news is, there aren't many changes there. Specifically, there are only four updates to the license. Of course, the document is updated to revision 5 throughout, which is more of a bureaucratic update. Aside from that, there's just one other change, the addition of paragraph 12. That paragraph states, highly reliable flight safety system tailoring. SpaceX must receive FAA signature on RCC 32411 tailoring change request TR24001 Starship prior to initiation of flight seven. From what we can find, the RCC 32411 is for Global Positioning and Inertial Measurements Range Safety Tracking Systems Commonality Standard. So it seems to be a document that sets out the standard for all sorts of range safety tracking systems and aligns them. It appears SpaceX needs to update this document before receiving the go-ahead for Flight 7, which seems like a fairly trivial part of the process. And that's it. Those are all the changes we have for the Flight 7 license. Overall, it's impressive to see how regulatory concerns are becoming less and less of an issue with Starship flights. Flights 5 and 6 had virtually no issues at all, and now with Flight 7, the license is already here, about four weeks or so before the flight. There is one more thing I want to bring up. As I said in the intro, it feels like SpaceX and the FAA have turned this license around incredibly quickly, especially considering that Flight 6 was only a month ago. And well, that could be because Flight 6 didn't need a new license. If we cast our minds back all the way to Flight 5's license, it allowed SpaceX to perform any flight with the Flight 5 vehicle configuration and mission profile. And well, Flight 6 was the same vehicle configuration and mission profile. 
We don't know when the license process began for Flight 7, but there is a chance this feels early because there was a month of time not needed to license Flight 6 that could have been used to work on the license for Flight 7. Either way, I hope this puts to rest the claims that the FAA is purposefully delaying Starship's launches for whatever reason. SpaceX isn't the only company saying they're waiting for regulatory approval, <coughs> Blue Origin, and this license has come through a month before the launch. Of course, the vehicles are not yet stacked and there are still final steps to be performed to get everything ready. With Block 2's changes, you can rest assured that we're preparing a video to update you on all the updates to the vehicle side of the flight, so make sure you subscribe and hit all the YouTube buttons so you don't miss that. But after this news, everyone can be at ease. Regulatory concerns won't be an issue for Flight 7, which the last we heard is currently planned for as early as next month. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching and goodbye.